We're going to talk about it. Top five. Right. Top ten. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. I'm going to start off. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say my intro and then I'm going to... Introduce, introduce me. Yeah. Okay. And then we're just going to go off to the races. Okay. All right. All right. Ready. And action. <laughs> And welcome back to the Blanking Out Podcast, a podcast on YouTube, and I'm your host, Ryan Bhatt, and with me today is my very good friend, Balash Chaudhry. Balash Chaudhry. You and can have seen me on Stiff, which is on the channel. Oh, Stiff. Uh-huh, yeah, always with the complaining, huh, Richie? Are you sure your name isn't actually big? Or a uh, previous podcast that we've done very similar to the one today. Oh, that was our top five movies of 2017. And we are here to talk about uh, top 10 2016. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was too good. That was, that, too that good. was incredible. That was a callback. That was a throwback Thursday. Yes. No, no, it's Friday. And now we're here today to talk about our top five movies of 2019. So let's just, uh, I say we just cut right to the chase, you know, um, if you're sitting back at home, grab some popcorn, grab some, uh, some jelly, jelly beans or whatever, and just have a good time. Right off the bat, we're just going to see our worst movie of the year, because uh, who doesn't like to celebrate some, some classic failures. We're going to go off with our worst movie of the year, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go my top five list, we're going to go through that, and then we're going to go to his top five list, and then we're going to... Are we going to do like the, the top ten at all? Like ten, nine, eight, seven, six? Are we gonna run through that right now? No, I think we'll just do top five. Okay, okay. I think we'll just totally do top five. It makes it easier, you okay. know? Okay. For the, for, the, for the kiddies sitting at home. Okay, cool. And uh, for the for the single dads who are sitting at home. Okay. Too. And the single moms. <laughs> and the rapists in the basements watching us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this started. All right, okay. Top five. My top five. Wait, no, worst. Worst movie. Oh, worst movie. Oh, God, what are you doing? This is why. Is I this my podcast or your podcast? Uh, this is why I, you've got to have a good co host. All right, thank you for reminding me. Yep, yeah. Right. Worst movie of the year. I'm gonna go first. My worst Ooh. movie of the year. It was Us. No. <laughs> I did not like Us. I did not like Us oh. at all. I totally forgot about Us. I should have known. I was rant I ranted about it the entire year. I should have known that was your worst movie. <laughs> That's classic. Alright, let me just get started off the bat by saying that Lupita Nyong was great. We can all agree that Lupita Nyong was a very fine actress. She was great in 13 Years a Slave. She's good in everything she's in. I think, if anything, she deserves to be a Best Actress uh, nomination for this for being this train wreck of a shit fest of a film because she does great. Okay. Other than that, um, the metaphors in this movie, you know, having metaphors in your movie doesn't really make a bad, make a good movie, mm -hmm. and it's boring. It's predictable. It's cliche. Ooh. Expected more. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So that was my worst movie of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, and you haven't seen Us, by the way. I haven't seen Us, but if I had watched Us, I'd kiss your ass and say, <laughs> obviously, it's also my. You can make worst. your own opinions. I don't have any opinions. Right. Watch, our five list is going to be the same. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. But okay. my worst movie, I haven't had a lot of time to think about this, but I think off the top of my head, it's it's Captain Marvel. I think it's Captain Marvel. Oh. I'm trying to think. There aren't any movies that I've gone to that have been like straight up just. Bad, bad. Like, Ad Astra wasn't good in my opinion. Yeah, that we was watched bad. it together. But, like, Captain Marvel, we watched together too. That was like, like, I didn't like watching that movie, honestly. Like, sitting through that movie, I was like, Are you gonna rewatch it? I'm not gonna rewatch it. You're not it. gonna rewatch it. I'm okay. not gonna rewatch <laughs> Captain Marvel, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like Brie Larson. I, I, I don't like, like, I don't know. She, she won an Oscar, right? She, she did. Her. She did one for Best Actress. I haven't seen that movie. It may, may be good. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen yeah. it. She might be good in that, honestly. In Captain Marvel, she's not like, she's not good for sure. And yeah. I don't want to say she's horrible or anything, but mm -hmm. she's just, she's not bringing anything to it. Like Chris Hemsworth, when he's playing Thor, he brings something to that movie Thor, you know? Yeah, I Same with Chris Evans, especially Robert Downey Jr. I feel like you know? Brie Larson, in terms of Marvel leads that they've got Chadwick Boseman, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Brie Larson is like the one mis miscast that they've done. It's, and it's not just because she's a female, because Scarlett Johansson. Oh, it, oh, Scarlett. Me, jo it, it's only because she's a female. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. You know, maybe you might be some misogynistic <laughs> woman abuser, <laughs> woman abuser type of guy, but I'm not. Okay. I love Scarlett Johansson. I, All right. I really love Scarlett oh, Johansson. We, okay. love, we love Scarlett Johansson. Okay. If you're yeah. out there, Scarlett Johansson. If you're out there, you can always give me a guest on this podcast. 
we're talking in a, to a camera alone. In no, a no, we're talking to Scarlett Johansson. We're talking to Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Alright, okay. Yeah, I'll agree with you. You know, Captain Marvel, that's a fine choice. That's a great yeah, choice. Alright, yeah. I can agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay, I, I, yeah, for sure. For me. Alright, and I'm talking about garbage movies. Let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, what we're here for. Top 5. Ooh. Starting off with my top five. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, me. Ooh. And then five, four, three, two, one, you. Okay. Right, so the audience at home doesn't get really right. okay. confused, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so my top five. The f my top five. Number five, Avengers Endgame. Ooh. <laughs> Personally, for me, I don't think this is a top five MCU worthy. Um, maybe top ten MCU worthy. But I mean, it, it was just a, the best theater experience I've had so far. I agree. It's just by that. Yeah, oh, for, yeah. Sure, for sure. For sure. People were cheering when things, character moments happened, mm -hmm. which is nuts. You, yeah. can have, you have character yeah. moments happen in any other movie, but they don't get that arousing round of applause. Yeah, that like yeah. when you have like a movie that that's an original that came out of nowhere, the audience usually isn't going to be like clapping for the hero because they're still coming to terms with the hero. They're still coming to terms with the protagonist and like getting to know him. I agree. In Avengers Endgame, the whole theater with you was cheering because they, the they were they were invested. They grew characters. up with these characters with you, so it's like yeah, I agree that it's like. A crazy experience yeah. watching that movie. My, my favorite part of the movie is the first hour. Just the fact that you get to see a heroes deal with something we never seen them deal before, with is which is the loss mm -hmm. of a battle. The loss they lost in the last one. So you yeah. get to see, you get to see, but maybe spend the whole first act with them. You see what happens to Hawkeye. He becomes Ronan. He goes dark. Captain America starts a moral support group. Tony yeah. Stark starts a family. All these you never get to see these things mm -hmm. in a movie because. I mean, they never become as successful where the audience wants to see the hero fail and then come back and stuff like that. True. So, the first hour is my favorite. The second hour, when they're trying to find all the Infinity Stones, it feels a little tedious. Yeah, I, I, I can see where you're coming from. It, like, I, some of the scenes, like, when Thor, where Thor went, I didn't really like. He went back to Asgard, right, with Rocket. I was like, I liked his interaction with his mom. Yeah, I see. But like, it felt kind of like boring and like using Natalie Portman kind of felt gimmicky, like to like yeah, a I agree. point. Um, but that I, was the second hour for me, and then the third hour, I think it's just totally Saturday morning cartoon in all the best ways. So it it, it leveled out for me. Second hour not so good, but the third hour very good for sure. And that's my top five. That's my uh, fifth number five spot. Mm -hmm. Moving on is uh, number four. Number four is. Uh, do you forget? Oh no no! Uh, it's it's number four is Ford v Ferrari. Ooh, okay okay okay. All right now, uh, I love James Mangold, mm -hmm. right? The, so I saw Logan. Logan was the best movie of the year uh, in 2017, in my opinion. That was my number one that year. Uh, Ford v Ferrari came out. Uh, I gotta say, Christian Bale, best actor nomination, possible win, maybe? Mm -hmm. I agree, I 100% agree. And uh, Matt Damon, on the other hand, you <laughs> described it to me perfectly before I saw the movie. You said that Matt Damon just, he's Matt Damon with yeah, accent. Yeah, I mean, Matt Damon did well, but like, he didn't, he didn't do something. Like, Christian Bill did something. He acted. Matt Damon was like, he was enjoyable. He was nice he to was watch. was fun, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah. it's Christian Bale's movie, because he has for a character sure. arc. Matt Damon doesn't really have that? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, he doesn't have that, yeah. Uh, James Mangold really, Directed this movie uh, so that even if you're not a car person, you can still enjoy. Right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But but that's not to say that the car racing scenes. Oh, they're definitely enjoyable. They're shot very pretty well. Uh, they are definitely the highlights of the movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. The, the the complete wide shots, like the way the the, the I don't want to like the mixing kind of with the sounds. It was amazing. Like a theater experience was amazing to watch that. You, movie. you see, you hear the um, the engine running, oh, yeah. uh, the throttle going, yeah. all that stuff. It's it incredible. Crazy. Yeah, a lesser director. Probably would have focused only on the action scenes because mm -hmm. it's for me Ferrari. That name sells itself to just crazy True. Fast and Furious type action scenes. Mm -hmm. I would love to see a Fast and Furious directed um, version of for me Ferrari. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would be <laughs> crazy. No, but uh, J James Mangold, he made it in such a way that even if you're not a car person, which I'm not, I was able to enjoy it. And, mm -hmm. and he still made the car racing scenes fun. And I really hope to see Mangold and Bale up for Oscars this Oscar season. Moving on. Uh, number three, which is oh, I'm getting excited. Number three, which is Richard Jewell. Whoa, I did not see that coming. Okay. All right, all right. Now Richard Jewell. Uh, not many people have seen it, but it's a Clint Eastwood directed movie. Sam Rockwell's in it, Olivia Wilde's in it, John Hamm, uh, and yeah, and that's the main that's the main cast. And but. Uh, tells a real-life story about uh, the 1996 Summer Olympics bombing where a security guard found a bomb, saved 
hundreds of lives. But later on, the FBI started to think that he was the one who planned the bomb in the first place, and he started getting under media fire and stuff like that. Very. I never heard about the story beforehand. Me neither. Uh, but I went in, and I was very really pleasantly surprised because I had no expectations. The trailer really hooked me, and I thought this might be pretty good. Clint Eastwood, you know, he's pretty good. Wow. And it really blew me away. Uh, the reason why you might think that this is why you might be surprised why I put this over 4B Ferrari mm -hmm. is because in 4B Ferrari, I like the movie. Don't get me wrong, I, I like the movie. It's just that the last final 20 minutes of the movie, mm -hmm. they, they put the movie down in I my eyes. In my eyes, maybe yeah. not for you because yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about this. We talked about I remember talking about this, the ending you didn't like because of what uh, Bill did, right? What Bill's character did. Yeah, not to go into the spoilers because it's still pretty fresh. Yeah, but true. the movie's still out. But mm -hmm. Uh, Bale has a character arc in this movie, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and the way his character arc ends, I, l I felt pretty unsatisfied with how it all ended. I think that's fair. I think that's fair to me because like... And I know it happened in real life, I understand that, but just because something happened in real life, you still yeah. have to explain it in the movie itself, in, in terms of the narrative. You get what I mean? I see what you mean, and it's kind of hard to get it, to explain it without getting into right, it. Details, but did, yeah. did it work for you? It worked for me. And to explain why it worked for me would try kind of getting would be getting into what happened. Point. But yeah. you but you enjoyed it more. I enjoyed it more than you think when than you did. I think. Yeah, yeah. because I liked it. It's just the final twenty parts, mm -hmm. uh, where the whole the whole movie is marketed around Le Mans, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a race. Yeah. And after the race happens, just a couple more resolution bits. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really into that. I yeah. felt that Le Mans was a climax, and then it was. Just, yeah. I see what you mean. So I guess maybe they're in a bit of a um, in a tight spot because what happens with Le Mans, which if you don't know, I'm not gonna spoil, but mm -hmm. something happens with um, Ford themselves in Le Mans. Yeah, yeah. So I guess they were in a tight position. I understand that, but the movie up to that point was really, really good. Mm -hmm. So, but Richard Jewell, on the other hand, from start to finish, I never felt that I never had a I never have a problem with Richard Jewell. For Friday, I can point out things I didn't like. Avengers uh -huh. Endgame, I can point out a whole hour of things I didn't like. Uh -huh. Richard Jewell, I, I can't say. Well, I didn't like that part. Cut that out. I, I don't really find any problems with it. That's why it's number three on my list. Ooh, okay. Wow. So, so that's... Uh, I mean, Clint Eastwood... Clint Eastwood's great. He, that should also be... Um, he should also get an Oscar nomination for that. And that is my number three spot. Richard Jewell. Okay. All right. All right. Am I surprising you so far? I, like, number three, I'm surprised. Because I haven't watched that movie, and I didn't know that it was so high on your I list. I don't think you'll like Richard Jewell more than 45, because it's not... Okay. Let's be fair. A movie called Forty Ferrari is gonna be more fast paced than true, than a uh, drama. Because Richard Jewell yeah. is a drama. It's not a. Um, I mean, not Forty Ferrari isn't really action, but I mean, it's more upbeat. It's more fast. -paced. I see what you mean. But yeah, I don't think you'll like it. But I just okay. because of Forty Ferrari, with my experience with the last twenty minutes, yeah, Richard Jewell, I had no problems with it at all. Okay. Right. Okay. Moving on, my number two spot is Toy Story Four. Whoa, okay. I'm surprised again. Okay. okay. Now, I was I was more surprised than anybody because mm -hmm. Toy Story 3, the way Toy Story 3 ended, mm -hmm. it's a broken record, but everyone thought that Toy Story 3 ended perfectly. And I, for a long time, I thought that too. But Pixar doesn't disappoint. I still haven't watched Toy Story You still Story haven't watched it? And I want to, but, you know. I saw Toy Story 4 again yesterday, just before this, because I wanted to see. Is it, is it really my number two? And then I watched it again, and I was like, oh, yeah, it was number two wow. for a reason. Okay. And it's really good. Okay. It's really good. Um, and it's not just because, because um, I rewatched, like I said, I rewatched Toy Story 4. I thought maybe it was just because of my low expectations. Uh -huh. It's not because of my low expectations. It's just a good movie on its own. Okay. Uh, okay. Once again, I don't really find any problems off the top of my head. Well, maybe some problems. Um, the character of Buzz. Uh, I mean, you know, we've been following for the past the entire series. Mm -hmm. uh, this is primarily Woody's story, so Buzz okay. doesn't really get much to. But it makes sense, yeah. right? The characters get silent. All the main cast, you know, Slinky and Rex. Yeah, yeah. They don't get a lot to do, but that it makes sense because th this is not about them. You had a whole, you had a whole trilogy mm -hmm. about them, and now it's time for Woody's story to end. I feel like Toy Story Three was the ending of Andy's toys. Right? Okay. But Toy Story 4 was uh, the ending of Andy's favorite toy, Woody. Did Toy Story 4 feel like Endgame in terms of like the experience at the theater? No. No? Well, no. It didn't feel like that? No, no, it didn't. Well, I mean, obviously not to that that's level. Not, that's not the point. I mean, not to that level, but did it feel like... Was there added value going to the theater watching Toy Story 4 because it was Toy Story 4? Like, did it feel like the audience was with you type of thing? Like how it I know I it didn't feel like a like a rock stadium type of thing. It, oh, no, I, okay, I'm surprised, honestly. But I mean, does that make for a better movie? No, no, no. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my favorite movie of all time, Steve Jobs. I didn't see it in theaters. I saw it alone in my house mm -hmm. 
in a dark room. So, but it's my favorite movie of all time. I don't okay. even have a rock stadium. Thing. That's fair. That's fair. Toy Story 4. I really enjoyed it. Pixar didn't let me down. Uh, I didn't know what they were going, but then when they um, when the movie was heading towards this is the conclusion of Woody's storyline. Mm -hmm. It all came into picture, and that makes my yeah. number two. Okay. Are you wow. glad to see Toy Story 4? I'm okay. surprised. Uh, now I have to see Toy Story 4. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say I would recommend Richard Jewell to you that much, mm -hmm. but I would recommend Toy Story 4, okay. especially if you've seen all of them. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna check out Toy Story 4. Alright. Wow, that's that one surprised me. That one hit me, for sure. Okay. Uh, Toy Story 4, I've, uh, one last thing. I cried the most I've ever cried in that movie. Ooh, okay. I, yeah, like, it was, uh, last night I was watching and I was completely bawling my eyes out. And I've done that, like, it was like the most. You saw me cry at the end of Logan. Yeah, yeah. Toy Story 4, it was more, it hit more. <laughs> okay, wow, I'm surprised. Okay. Maybe it's because of nostalgia or maybe, uh -huh. oh yeah, I'm making excuses for my opinion. <laughs> No, I just, I enjoyed it. Okay. Alright, Toy Story 4, I enjoyed it a lot, it was done well. That's my number two. Okay. Alright, moving on to my number one. Mm -hmm. My number one is... Knives Out. Whoa, okay, All shit. Right. Now, All right. now, I may not be the world's biggest Brian Johnson fan after The Last Jedi. I am more surprised than anyone that Knives Out was even competent, but uh -huh. after watching Knives Out, I realized Ryan Johnson, he can be a pretty good director when he, uh, give him the right story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Knives Out was amazing. I, I like I give that to you for sure. That I'm surprised still. That's number one, but still, wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, I just uh, I'm more shocked than anyone because I, last time I'm not totally sold on it yet. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's some choices I don't agree. Yeah. But I love Looper. I love. I, Looper. I love Looper too. I like right. Looper and then I felt like this was him going back to his um. Like, I guess I want to say roots, but not really roots. But he goes back to what he does best, which is original storylines. That's sure. my opinion. I think he does better than that. I, I agree. I agree with you. He shines more writing original yeah. stories. Do you think? Do you think Looper is better than Last Jedi? Lo I think Looper is better than. Last yeah. Jedi. So I think yeah. for so yeah. far, right now at this point, mm -hmm. he does better original stories than he does uh, franchise movies. Uh, I gotta say though, man, Ryan Johnson. I this movie is all direction. This movie is all direction. You don't have that same storyline and give it to J.J. Abrams. It would have been a completely different type of. Oh, for sure, I agree. Yeah, I agree. A lot of twists and turns. And it's a whodunit, but then it's not really a whodunit, but then it, uh, And one thing that Knives Out does better than a lot of other Ryan Johnson movies is that it incorporates humor in the right spots. Last Jedi, it felt like Luke throws over his lightsaber. Oh, it's funny, uh, ah, Yeah. Right? Kylo Ren is shirtless, ah, that's But funny. then again, like, in The Last Jedi, that throwing away the lightsaber is consequential to the first movie. When you have a director like um, Ryan Johnson, that's why he's so good in doing original movies because when he does jokes like that in franchise movies, he's like um, consequentially like affecting other movies. Altering other movies, movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly too. Because he wants to be in a movie that he doesn't care about what's going on outside of his movie. He just, I feel like he just wants to make his own movie. Which can be a good thing, but yeah. can be a bad thing, right? Yeah. If, it, if it might not be the best if you're working in a franchise setting, mm -hmm. but if you're doing your own uh, sandbox thing, yeah, it works out great. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cast, the entire ensemble of Knives Out. Wonderful, Chris Amazing. Evans, uh, Daniel Craig, Michael Shannon—they're all great. Mm -hmm. But I feel like not, and everyone gets their time to shine. But this movie, I everyone had to be on the same page. This movie—it just felt like Ryan Johnson crafted this movie up. Like, yeah, sure, Daniel Craig did great when he was there. Anna Diarma, uh, what's her name? Anna Diarma. Yeah, she yeah. did great. But this movie was sculpted. This entire story was sculpted by Ryan Johnson. Mm -hmm. And this movie wouldn't be the same without. This movie's all direction. If you may not like, you may not like Ryan um, Knives Out as much as I do, but you cannot deny that this is arguably the best directed movie of the year. Maybe not the best uh, best action in the movie. Maybe not the best heartfelt moments in the movie. But it's, you know, it's not completely heartfelt all the way. Yeah. There's some yeah. comedic moments. There's some For thriller sure. moments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But this is arguably the best directed movie this For year, sure. and personally my favorite movie of the year. Knives Out hey. was my number one. Wow. Alright. That was crazy. I'm totally surprised at that. I predicted Knives Out, but I didn't predict it as number one. I didn't predict any of the other movies on your list, honestly. <laughs> so that's crazy. Well, I mean, I, I can't control. Movies are subjective. You know, you can't control for how sure. things hit you. For sure. Well, that was my list. Wow. And now we're here for the main event, which is, <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, Obviously. You guys, watch this list. you guys have skipped over a year now. He's put it in the description. He's put this, this timestamp right here. You're here now. Don't worry about what happened in the past 15 minutes. I'm here. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Come on. Come on. Get to the chase. Get okay. The chase. All right. So, number five. Okay. My number five movie of the year is 4B Ferrari. 
Oh. Okay. Oh, that's a little that's a little low on, on my list. It was you really liked it. I really liked it. It was number four for you, right? It was number four for me, but you liked it more than me. I liked it more than you, and it was number five for me. Alright, okay. Which is I feel like is gonna surprise you in terms of the rest of my list. But yeah, uh, so yeah. Okay. number five, what was number five for you? Avengers Endgame. Avengers so but I'm pretty sure it's Avengers Endgame in your top six. I, I feel like it's fine if I tell you now, because I'm in the, It's fine. Avengers Endgame is not on my list. Oh. It's not on my list. Alright, okay. And it was it was on the top ten list, I guess you could say. If I made a list, top ten, it would be on there, but it wasn't near top five, to be honest. Avengers Endgame. Oh, okay, alright. Yeah. So, top five. So, number five, for Ferrari, everything you said, yep. and the ending, which I enjoyed a lot more than you did. What happened at the end of Le Mans, I liked... But then what happened after that? What they did to conclude, I guess, uh, yeah. Bale's story. I agree with you. I didn't. I feel like I didn't. Did you didn't like that, right? I didn't like it. No, I didn't no. like that either. Kind of felt also like weird. It happened in real life, obviously. So and of course it happened. Yeah, happened in real it life. just felt weird the way they did it. And then, but Le Mans, I liked. I enjoyed everything that happened. I loved Bill. Bill. He made that movie. He like is Bill, movie. Yeah. Oh man. Like, he is the highlight of the movie. For it, sure. Like James Mangold, I'm not like taking anything away from him. He did an amazing James Mangold does great with the, yeah. the directing scene, the, the drama scenes mm -hmm. and the comedy scenes, but I mean, it's, oh, when yeah. Bale's on screen, my eyes are glued. James Mangold did amazing. Bale did amazing. Damon did fine. John Bernthal was also in that. He did fine But too. I mean, I, he, he was, he's, big, he's big in the, the first sure. half of the movie and then he kind of true. That's true. disappears in That's the true. end. That's uh, true. I forgot the name of the actor. I think it's... Is it Josh Lucas? I forgot his name. He's the guy that's kind of like the villain. He's kind of like the villain of the movie where he's on Ford's side, but he's trying to control Ford. I think it is Josh Lucas. I forgot his name, but that actor, he's a pretty good actor, and I think he did a pretty good job too. I liked, though, that they respected Ford. They like they kind of respected him. They didn't want to like thrash the name and be like, oh, this big company. I mean, for it, no, no, Ford. Oh, Ford. oh cause, cause, uh, they're going against the corporate. Yeah, like I didn't. I, I'm happy they didn't do like, oh, Ford's this horrible company that was trying to control um, Bale's character and all this type of stuff. It was just one person. Yeah. It was just management. It was just like it was. Yeah. yeah, it was just one person. The main guy, I forgot, like Ford. I don't know his real name. But, but he, he's the son of the Ford. Yeah, the yeah, son or something. Whatever. But he, he was fine. He wasn't like no. They didn't try to. Make he was well intentioned. Him. He was well yeah, intentioned. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I like that they respected that. That was like really cool of the movie to do. Um, a yeah. lot, of, a lot of things that happened in the movie. I mean, I don't know the real story, but when mm -hmm. they happened, I was like, "Wait, that actually happened?" And that's nuts that something like this even happened. I didn't yeah. know about Le Mans, that how it works, how it, how they start the race, and how long the race <laughs> oh, is. Oh yeah, I yeah. don't know how long. I didn't, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't know any of that stuff either, which yeah. is crazy. Which, which is, which and is it's kind of cool. It kind of brings in an audience too. Like I have a cousin who's really into cars and stuff. He's not into movies, and I went with him to watch this movie, and I was like, and it was like the week it came out, yeah. and I was like, hey, so you heard about this movie? He's like, oh yeah, I watched it. The day it came out, I was like. <laughs> you don't watch movies, and he's like, yeah, but it's Ford it's Ferrari. Ford Ferrari. I yeah. love cars. I'm like, oh wow, okay, that's that's interesting. That's yeah, cool. So it, it brings in the car audience, but yeah. it also show it makes us learn something. I didn't know about Le Mans at all, for sure. And I definitely didn't know about this the Ford Ferrari rivalry at all. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I haven't heard about so, that either. So. so that's your number five. That's, that's so my number five. Fun. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So we're going to my number four. I think that I can remember my number four. Ugh. Ooh. My number four. Okay, All I right. got my number four. Okay, this one I'm surprised wasn't on your list. Number four was Joker for me. Number four was Joker. Number six is Joker for me. Ooh, so it's just okay. me. Okay. 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 okay, okay. I guess I can now say that my number six was Knives Out. Oh no 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 no! You put Joker over Knives Out. Come on. I put Joker over Knives Out. Come on. I'm sorry. And and. To be fair though, I wanted to explain this while I was explaining my number five, which was 4B Ferrari. Yeah. That Knives Out and 4B Ferrari were interchangeable for me. I'm not gonna lie, like right now I could say that I liked Knives okay, Out right, as my number five. That's fine, yeah. I love Knives Out. I'm not taking away from that. Huh? Okay, fair But on to my number four, Joker. Okay? Alright. And Joker was just, it was an amazing movie. And for me, I feel like the way you didn't like the last 20 minutes of um, 4B Ferrari, I didn't really like the last, what they did with the end of Joker. The last 10 minutes? Well, well, I, I, I think, yeah, I'll be, yeah. I'll be on the same boat. Yeah. Like, like I loved Joker. Joaquin Phoenix is, he's a god. He's, a, he's yeah. honestly a god. <laughs> he's, a god. <laughs> he's one of the best actors alive right now. I feel like he's amazing. He's doing amazing. And he completely, like, I don't want to take away from Todd Phillips. He did a good job directing the movie, but I feel like it didn't show that, wow, this movie is good because of Todd Phillips. Like, I never thought that. I never thought that, wow, when I'm watching this movie, Todd Phillips, like, he really directed this movie to be really good. I don't know if I, I felt that. I felt like he took a lot of inspiration from other old, obviously he said that before, it's Taxi Drivers, yeah. movies like that. I feel like the writing 
And then the performance by Joaquin Phoenix is really what just like that took the movie to like. A I think I, I'm not too big on the writing myself, but I think it is the direction that. Or like I meant like the story, the way the, the, what they decided to do with the movie was it was just like wow. And and Joaquin Phoenix though was just crazy. Like, I loved what he did, and I loved that um, the ending scene with the uh, obviously the ending scene at uh, the talk show. I forget. I always, I always forget what it's called. Oh, uh, in the streets? No, 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 no. The talk show. The 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 scene. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that's it. Okay. Yeah. What's the name? What's the oh, Murray? Murray. Murray. Yeah, the Murray show. The Murray show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, that whole scene, I love the whole um, the whole, argument like, back and forth. Argument yeah. back and forth. I love. I love that. I'll do. I like that argument. I really liked it a lot. The way it ended, the way it transitioned, it could have ended at a couple points. It could have ended right after. Can I spoil what happens? Uh, sure. No one made a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have ended it right after he kills Murray, right? They could have ended it right there. I thought, whoa, they're gonna end it right here. This is gonna be awesome. Then they kept going. And I was like, okay, let's see what happens. Then they went, and he's the cops. The whole streets are going crazy. Then I thought, whoa, this is an even better ending because it really closed off his arc. The, everybody yeah, everyone, him. everyone worships him. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah, like it, this is like the perfect ending. He stands on the car. Everybody's cheering for him. I was like, whoa, this is like, like the whoa. imagery and what what it oh, means yeah. for the narrative itself. Yeah, I agree with you. Crazy. If it ended right there, that would have been great. I would have been like amazing. And then they continued and they went to like the whole Bruce Wayne type or uh, Set up origin to, type yeah. thing. And I was like, oh, oh, I really didn't want this. Like, why did you have to do that? Why like. I, I honestly, that was the last thing I expected because everything leading up to the movie, I was like, whoa, they're not even going to do a sequel. They're not even thinking about that type of stuff. They want to do this origin, uh, original, uh, like one movie, no sequels. Like, I thought that they're really sticking to their guns and not trying to make this into a franchise type thing. Yeah. And then they said, go do that. And it, like, it come, like, I was like, wow, I can't believe you did that. It was so disappointing. I, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Yeah. The movie ended like just a couple of minutes before. I think even the Murray show, I don't think that, that really makes for a satisfying ending because it's yeah. not the ending of his character arc. True, true. Because he, he, he's, Arthur is the bottom of the barrel. He's the trash of society. Yeah, yeah. But when he rises up against the, uh, with society, or society looks up to him, mm -hmm. that makes for a good that character been, arc. That would have been a good ending. But then they kept going, and then even after that, they went to like this, this honestly I, unexplained to me like type thing where they put him in a mental asylum, and then he's running around. And I honestly don't know what it meant. I don't know what that meant. And I, don't, I don't think it really yeah, mattered. Yeah, that's why it's honestly it's it's where it is for me right now. It's a it's at number four. But yeah, it was a, it was a, it was an amazing movie. And Joaquin Phoenix is the sole reason why it's this high on my list. All right, yeah, say. okay, I'll, I can agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay, Joker was good. All right, thank you. So number three, number three, number three. This, uh, okay, forty Ferrari, Joker, and number three. Uncut Gems. Oh my god. <laughs> Number three is Uncut Gems. Mm, okay. That's the one movie that's on my list that I really wanted to watch, but I couldn't find the time to watch it. Okay. So, Uncut Gems is an amazing, amazing movie. Adam Sandler, even the actors in it, like, there's Julia Fox in it. It's like, her, I think it's her first time in a movie. She, she's, a, she's a big character in the movie. I think it's her, like, debut. Kevin Garnett, a basketball player. <laughs> He's in the movie and he does, he does well. He plays himself, but he, like, he does well, like surprisingly for a basketball player. Julia Fox did amazing. Adam Sandler though, of course. Whoa, of course. yeah. Whoa, Adam. Like I did not. Like I feel like actually I want to say I didn't expect it, but I did expect it. Like I knew he was gonna do good. I knew my boy Adam Sandler. He was gonna come through. He was gonna <laughs> oh, pull through. Man. All these past years, you've been doing all these, you know, kind of offbeat comedies, comedies and stuff yeah. like that. And I, yeah. I, I don't mind Adam Sandler doing comedies. It's just the comedies he's doing right now with like Jack and Jill and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but when I saw Uncut Gems, and I look at the marketing, and I thought, oh, is this really going to be a semi-serious type thing? And yeah. I'm actually looking forward to it. And I didn't get to see it. Trust me. But if Adam Sandler is good, Adam Sandler, my, my soul is at He is so talented, man. He is such a talented guy. He, he does such a good job. It's amazing. It's amazing what he does in the movie. The story is amazing. It keeps you thrilled. Like, I've never seen a character like that, honestly, where I hate him, but I love him. Ah. So one last thing that yeah. I want to say. Mm -hmm is that I've never cheered during a movie like this. Like, obviously, Endgame. You know, of course, that, that's, that's movies, made for crowd-pleasing. There are movies right. like that, obviously, you gotta, you know, you're gonna cheer for it. But an original, you know, standalone movie like Uncut Gems, I, I, I was straight, I was watching the movie here, yeah. and there were times where I was like, yes! Or like, well, I never like, I never like, oh, I never did that, obviously, because that's, that's weird. But I, sometimes things would happen, I'd be like, yes! Mm. I'd like, be cheering on, and he, in the movie, he'd be like, yes, it would be like the most, it would be the best thing ever. Oh, that's Honestly. Cool. 
Yeah, so I like. So it's it was that satisfying. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. The, the, yeah, amazing. Okay. Is, this, is this the best Adam Sandler's ever been? Like, if you were to read, I haven't seen all, all of his movies. Actually, it's all of his movies. I haven't seen all of his movies, but I assume this is his best movie. You I assume. Really? I assume. I haven't seen every single movie, and he's good in like I've seen um, Wedding Singer, which he's like pretty good in. Wedding Singer. I haven't seen Punch Drunk Love. It's apparently he's really good. Yeah. Have you seen Billy, Billy Madison? I mean, obviously, I've seen all those movies, like those classic ones. But yeah. like, out of all the ones I've seen, those classics. Would you say this is his best? This is his best, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. High praise. High praise. He it was amazing. I need you to watch it. Please watch it. I wanted to watch it. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. So onto my number. That's your number three. That was my number four. Three. three. That was my number three. Now you're on to your number two. Number two. Okay. Number two. Let's see here. Number two. Okay. I don't think you saw this coming at all. I didn't see it coming. While I was thinking about, when I was making my list, I was like, wow, is this really that high up there for me? Number two, Dark Phoenix. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, really? Shit. Yep. Really? Yep. Let, yep. let the hate comments start <laughs> happening. <laughs> and, okay. and like, while I'm, I'm not judging. I'm not, yeah. I'm not judging. I'm yeah. just shocked. I'm not saying you, yeah. you're an idiot. No, 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 no. Yeah. While I was making the list, I was like, let me just see. Let me go back to the reviews. Not one review is good. <laughs> like, everybody hates this movie. I can't find any good reviews. Yeah, honestly. fair enough. I'm going to say yeah. this, though, that I... If people are the critics, critics have said that this is the worst movie you've seen all year. Yeah. If X and Dark Phoenix is the worst movie you've seen all year, you're lucky, dude. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, wrong? You sure. missed out on us, Ad Astra, Hellboy, so yeah. Men in Black International. Anything? Um, <laughs> Dark Phoenix is the worst. God damn, son. Dark Phoenix. I I love that movie, and every time I think about it, it depresses me because I know it's gone. I know it's done. I know it's oh. it's over. I can relate to that. Oh yeah. man. Especially I uh. Michael Fassbender's. I right love here. that movie. I love Michael Fassbender. I love everyone in the, uh, James McAvoy. I love everyone in the fucking movie. Well, what's her name? Uh, Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. She was good in it too. Honestly, like, I she she has the most screen time. And yeah. She does pretty well. She does pretty well. Um, I'd say the worst thing about the movie is Mystique. Like, honestly, <laughs> say, thank God she dies in the movie. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I don't like her in the movie. I don't like what they kind of. Like, yeah, especially when she has a. I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm gonna spoil it because it's been one. Well, I just said she, she died. I just said. Oh she yeah, true. <laughs> There's that well, the little scene she has with the Charles where she's like, um, and one mm -hmm. thing, the women do more work around here. You might want to change it to X Men. Uh, oh, oh, oh my oh, God, no. that's garbage. That's garbage. Yeah, that's garbage. That, yeah. Oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll agree with you. Yeah, Mystique. Yeah. She's about the oh, worst thing in the movie she... for me. Alright. Um, it was... I, I just love everything about Dark the movie. Your it's not my number two. And it was, it, it was almost my number one. If some things hadn't happened, honestly. If some things hadn't happened recently, it was almost my number one. Oh, okay. Alright. So... Alright, so, wait. Uh, so you like... Do you like the new cast? I... Well, not compared to the old cast. Like, the old, old cast was one thing, obviously. You know, the old cast. The original <laughs> cast. Mm -hmm. And then there was the... The, the first class class, which yeah. is like amazing. Obviously. I like for, oh, first the class. first class class is what we have right now. Yeah. Uh, well, not right now, but we just had with Dark Phoenix. Yeah. And then the new one, which I, I'm i honestly not a fan of. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm indifferent to it. I mean, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'd say I'm indifferent to it too. I'd agree. Yeah. I, I, one thing that did bother me of Dark Phoenix is that um, I don't know if this was a James McAvoy decision or this mm -hmm. was a, a directorial decision, mm -hmm. but there are some scenes where James McAvoy purposely tries to sound like uh, what's his face? Patrick Stewart? Oh, I think I saw that too. Yeah, I think that yeah, was probably. It's like, stop, Sean. What's it? What's some um, Cyclops? In it? Stop, Scott. Yeah, it was probably. It was, it was for sure a choice yeah. he made. It was for sure a choice he I, made. To I, do I that. think so. Yeah. I, I think he's like, you know, it's my last movie. Might as well. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. yeah it's, because he looks up to Patrick. Stewart. I still like James McAvoy in the movie. I didn't think he was like. Yeah, I agree with that. That whole thing. But um. And it's very inconsistent. It came in and out. In and out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like he, he does the Patrick Stewart thing and then he goes back to James. Yeah. Stewart. True. True. Uh, the, I like the director was interesting. I don't know if you know Simon Kinberg. I do know. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting that he directed this movie because he hasn't directed. I don't know if he's directed before, but he hasn't directed any of the. No, he hasn't directed. Before. Before. He's, he's just, written his first. Movie, his first director, but he's written for a lot of the, these old X Men movies. I think he's worked on. I was checking. He's worked on like Deadpool. He's worked on Martian. He's worked on Logan. He's worked on a lot of these movies, like uh, and, and, and X Men Last Stand as well. And I haven't seen a lot of reviews out there. I like I have seen that there've been bad reviews, but I haven't gone in depth in them. And I don't know if writing was one of the like critiques people have had about the movie. But I thought that the story was fine. I didn't think there were any like slow points. I don't think it was the writing that people had yeah. a problem with. I think okay. it was just the execution. Okay, okay. On paper, the movie seems fine. You know. What uh, I mean? Yeah, I did hear that people thought it was boring. But I honestly didn't feel like it was boring because I liked the actors. I liked what happened throughout the movie. I could agree, though, 
that um, Jessica Chastain, she's in the movie, right? She plays the... I think you could have had many other better villains. I, I, I agree too. I, I also agree. But I don't know. I didn't feel like this movie was about like hero, like X-Men versus a villain type thing. No, it, it was, was about, about more about Jean Grey. X-Men helping Jean Grey. Yeah. yeah. Like, I remember at the very end, during the train scene, um, she's like unconscious. And uh, James McAvoy is like talking to her, yeah. And she's like, "I'm gonna help my family." He says something like that, and it's like a, it's like a goosebump scene for me. When I watched it, I was like, "Oh shit, okay." And she comes just in the moment to like protect James McAvoy and all of them. Yeah. And it was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's not about the villain. I guess the villain is just a means to for tell sure. the narrative to propel sure. forward. If it was just about the villain, and that was the villain, I would have been a lot more disappointed. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I think Dark Phoenix has. Um, if there was like a, a an award category for scene of the year, mm -hmm. I think that. My Magneto and uh, Jean Grey mm -hmm. helicopter scene has got to be up there for sure. Yes, yes. That sure. and maybe um, the end game when Cap gets Mjolnir. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, what else can I think of? Uh, uh, maybe the Joker dancing scene or something like that. Maybe the Joker. Not the Murray, dancing scene. But the Murray, Murray scene. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Murray scene, yeah. So those, if you had a makeup category, that yeah. Magneto scene, that is. That I, cool. that Magneto scene, I watch for fun. Just sometimes I'll just watch it. For that fun. is just it's an amazing scene. Yeah. yeah. It's not just an action scene, but just the narrative purpose that. Magneto, yeah, he's been a villain for most of the entire series, yeah. and now he's, he has a people, he has his own family, and he gets invaded. Yeah, it's so just amazing. Like the Holocaust, yeah. like his parents were, and he's trying to protect his people. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit more deeper meanings behind the obvious boom, blam, helicopter. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Alright, so that was your number two. So that was my number two. Okay, that, I'm the most shocked by that. <laughs> that was really yeah. I like Dark Phoenix, yeah. like, more than most people I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, oh. I like Dark Phoenix a lot. And I'm so, so sad I didn't watch it in theaters. I'm, like, so depressed. Wait, but, so Dark Phoenix over 40 Ferrari? Dark Phoenix over 40 Ferrari. And Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. I mean, Uncut Gems I can't, I can't speak about. Uh -huh. Right? Dark, uh, wait, Uncut Gems was your fourth? Uh, was my, no. Uncut Gems was my third. Oh, third. So, so fifth was Ford V. Yeah. Fourth was um, Joker. Yeah. Third was Uncut. Second was now. Um, uh, so wait, so Dark it was a Dark Phoenix is the best comic movie of the year. Um, it's my favorite. Oh, that's number one is a comic movie. No, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's my, is, it, is it or not? It's not. Okay, alright, fine, fair enough. But Dark Phoenix is my favorite. I'm not gonna say it's like the best. The best. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna enough. say it's the best. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. I think Endgame is probably better. Dark yeah, I mean, yeah. what is it the yeah. best of like what yeah. it accomplished, yeah. what it did for sure, narrative wise, and, and yeah. like is it Dark Phoenix to me, it doesn't feel really comic booky. It's not really like sure there are action set pieces and stuff like that, but it doesn't feel like that to me. Yeah, honestly. the the director. To me, it's just the reason I love the movie so much is not because it's comic, because of the characters that have been set up over time. Fair enough. And their like interactions. Uh, the director described. Um, I was watching. I was re uh, watching the uh, listening to the audio commentary of Dark Phoenix, mm -hmm. and then Simon Kimberg was on it, and he described it as. Um, uh, what do you call it? As, as, uh, Apocalypse was like the, the disaster movie, but Dark Phoenix was like the it's a psychological thriller. Mm. It's not really a comic I book agree. movie. Yeah. Right, so what? Uh, and it's nice to see that the, the movie, it feels like it was made by somebody that understands. Oh, um, another um, contender for scene of the year is when... This is not really spoiled. I, we can talk. You said, I'm, you said so I'm, so I'm so sorry. I'm so much, yeah. sorry. But um, that scene when Gene makes Professor X walk... Mm. Ooh, oh yeah. I was like, yeah, 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 I know sound what you mean. in the neighborhood, it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the neighborhood. And no, he was in the neighborhood. Like it, it was in the um, subway. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, oh, he yeah. makes her. Sorry, she makes him walk. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. not only is James McAvoy's physical performance, it's the sound effect, it's the actual like visual effects of how it yeah, looks. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. in pain. Oh, it looks horrible. That looks horrible. Looks I really horrible. like. I really like that scene. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're actually going there. Shit. Yeah, yeah. That's nuts. Um. Uh, all right, man. All right. Right. Okay, so number two is Dark Phoenix, alright? On to my number one. Okay. Marriage Story. Marriage Story. <laughs> uh, okay, that's why, okay. that's what it is, yeah. So, Marriage Story. So, I I just watched this like two days ago, and I love Marriage Story. I love Adam Driver. Are you sure it's not just because you like Scarlett Johansson? Scarlett Johansson, please be on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like Adam Driver more than I like Scarlett Johansson, so, you know. I yeah, yeah, you know, same, same. I, oh, Adam Driver's a I, better, yeah. I love Adam Driver now. Like, oh my god, after this movie? Man, I'm surprised at what the, the things that he can do. Like, it's crazy. This movie straight up made me cry watching it. A couple times it made me tear up. The, the, there's a point at, in the movie where it just made me cry. Straight up. Like, when you said Toy Story 4 made you cry, I think just like that, this movie made me cry. And I think it made me cry the most is because it's relatable, obviously. Uh, yeah, Divorced yeah. parents type of thing. And it's really Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. I can't relate to that personally, but I mean, you don't need to relate to a movie to, yeah. to get the deeper meaning behind it and feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone did really, really, really good. It was, 
Scarlett Johansson, Adam Driver, they did amazing. Um, Ray Liotta is in it, weirdly enough. He's, he's in it. Oh my god, he, tell us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we watching that, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Uh, Laura Dern, I don't know if you know. I know Laura Dern. Dern. Yeah, She's yeah. in it. Um, can I say, the, I guess I can say the characters. So, Laura Dern, she plays a lawyer. Ray Liotta, he also plays a lawyer. Fair enough. Laura Dern plays a lawyer for Scarlett. Oh! Ray Liotta for Adam Driver. Okay, okay. And it's very cool to see that the movie gets into, like, how divorce and how lawyers coming into a divorce negatively affects the divorce. Yeah. Because they, they, the movie makes a really good point at saying, hey, if lawyers are not supposed to look at it objectively, they're supposed to look at it as a, be, uh, beating the other client, like protecting my client, exactly. that type of thing. So yeah. like, I'll do anything to protect my client. So it's like crazy when you see the, the things that happened, like, like unintentionally, like when in the beginning of the movie, it's not wait, 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 I'm not going to go into this. No, 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 okay. no, but, but the whole point is that I was, lawyers kind of... Yeah, I'm just going to say that it's cool to show how the, the movie um, shows how lawyers affect the divorce, and the, the, kind of like the law side of it, of yeah. the divorce. So right. that's really interesting. Do you think, you think um, Johansson and Driver can both be up for Oscar nominations? Johansson, I can say for sure. Adam Driver, he's my favorite. He's like my favorite. Like he's my like I want him to win. You want like, him, I want yeah, him to yeah, win. Yeah, like yeah. I so, no, so you think Johansson could be nominated? She, I think she should be nominated. Sure. I don't know if she's gonna win. Yeah. I have to think. You said I don't know. I haven't seen Us. I don't know if, if how well she did. Okay, yeah, but Lupita Nyong. Uh, okay, from what I've seen from Marriage Story, uh, mm -hmm. it's more. Um, heartfelt than us. Us was more metaphorical. Okay. Right, but Lupita okay. Nyong'o still doesn't. Because Marriage Story, they were really going for that Oscar. Yeah. I'm not trying to say I'm not gonna yeah. kiss your ass, but I think Johansson might have the better performance. I think she did a really good job. She did a really good job, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I I like that they also were the movie wasn't like siding with one person all the time. I liked how oh, they that's like good, yeah. they like showed both sides of the story. Are, are they are they co leads? Is it safe to say they're both? It, so I've seen conflicting um, opinions okay, on this. Yeah. What do you think? Well, In my it. opinion, it's not. Fair enough. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way it is. Who's who, I like who it's on more. But I've seen conflicted opinions on this. Like I've seen some people say it's this movie's so good that it's like completely both sides. They show everybody. When I was watching the movie, I was like, I like that they're sticking with this person a bit more. I like that. And in my opinion, they did, but maybe they didn't. Maybe it was just me thinking that way. Okay. Any cons? Any 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 anything that I stand out? I, uh, I don't think I can think of any cons. No? Like for the... No. no. Even with my number one knives, uh -huh. I can point out some cons about it. For me, I can say like, um, the acting was amazing. There was nothing wrong with the acting. The writing was really good. It was like, it's a movie where there's a lot, kind of like Steve Jobs, where there's a lot of talking. There's like, a, just a lot of scenes are just but like... That's, compel that's compelling by itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, the way it's done is exactly like Steve Jobs, actually. If I want to compare a movie, to Steve Jobs, oh, it's exactly oh like this. Oh my god. And not to like get you on my side or anything, <laughs> but oh my god. Steve Jobs is just like a bunch of scenes of lots of talking. It's a drama. It's a drama. It's and a just drama. like that, yeah. in Marriage Story, it's just like that basically. Yeah, so there's not, there's not a big action scene where Thanos comes down and fights um, Scarlett Johansson like Black Widow. Black Widow, I found yeah. you. <laughs> right. I wish I could get into spoilers because that's that's like would be... That would be amazing to get into spoilers, mm. but I'm not. I'm not. All right, okay. So yeah, no, my number one is Marriage Story. All right. Okay. So we did all our top fives. Let's uh, recap. Let's do a little recap. Okay. Uh, my top five. It was uh, top five was Avengers Endgame, right? Forty Ferrari. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, Richard, Richard Jewell. Richard Jewell. Oh my God! This is why I have him. Sorry. Right. Yeah, Richard Jewell. Mm -hmm. um, number two was Toy Story Four, uh -huh. and number one was Knives Out. And your was so number five was Four B Ferrari. Number four was Joker. Number three was wait, I'm forgetting my own list. Now. Uncut no, gems. No, uncut gems. Uncut gems. Number three was uncut gems. Number two was um, um, a dark phoenix, and number one was Marriage Story. Oh, all right, all right. All right. We have a pretty different list. We have one one movie together on our list. Really? Yeah, we have four before our. Four is that the only? Yeah, that's the only thing. I gotta say that that wraps up for our. Top five, yes. or technically top ten of yeah, 2019, yeah, or 20, yeah, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta say, it's very really nice, very really nice to do these things with you. It's the end of the decade. We're on to a new decade, new podcast, new podcast, new lists coming out. Of you know? course, you know we'll always be there every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, if you ever need us, and we're and you're just kind of feeling down, and <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, no, but uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch us uh, ramble on our favorite movies of the past year 
and I hope you have a good time doing uh, uh, living, living in <laughs> doing living <laughs> in uh, 2020 and the rest of your life. And that's about it. That's pretty much it. <laughs>